Hi, God bless you guys. How are you guys doing today? I am Prophetess uh, Kimberly Moses. Good to see you guys. Come on in and uh, let me know where you're coming from. Just begin to invite, invite, share, part me up. We have a lot to talk about today. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. We got a lot to talk about. I want to sit down and I want to teach you guys some stuff. Um... And I'm just excited. This has been on my heart for about the last week. And I know I don't have a lot of time. Usually in the daytime, what I usually do is I work on publishing books because I have a, a company, a publishing company. Uh, so let me just go ahead and uh, share to my networks real quickly. Yeah, this, this is going to be good. God bless you. So yesterday broadcast was awesome, you guys. Amen. Uh, I thank God for the people that got healed yesterday. I thank God for the people uh, that got, um, you know, some stuff broke off of them, heaviness broken off of them. Uh, I thank God for that. You know, it's, it's, it's awesome. You know, just uh, have the Holy Spirit show up. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Okay, second time from South Carolina. Yes. Make sure you register the person in South Carolina for the conference in October. Uh, you know, Power of the Me Conference is going to be awesome. You go, you can go on my website for the details. Amen. We're going to have an awesome move of God. And the glory of God is going to be so thick. And it's going to be all day Saturday, but it's not going to feel like all day. Because whenever you have a true move of God, it doesn't feel like, you know, uh, the time, is, it just flies by. You know, like, wow, I've been here for four hours. It feels like I've just been here for 30 minutes, you know. So it's going to be, it's going to be awesome. Uh, an awesome move of God so I'm very excited yes it was awesome and I thank God for the healing that went forth all right so uh, if you have not already registered for the conference in October uh, it's gonna be October the 20th it's gonna be powerful a four-hour prophetic intensive uh, I was talking to this woman of God and she she inboxed me she said I'm thinking about going to the prophetic intensive do you recommend it and you know what I told her I said I think you should go and get everything that God has for you. You know, go get impartation and um, take that back to your community. You know, get in, get in, get an impartation of an of, of an anointing that you may not have, or get a stronger grace. Amen. So you can go back in your community and impact. You know, and be more effective in ministry. So I I, I recommend. You know, go to go to trainings. Amen. Take classes of something that you may not have much knowledge in, but learn. Get books, get materials, amen. So that that was my answer for her. So um, also, if you have not already, women, please sign up for my sister's conference, Dominique Lynch, Queens Who Brunch Women's Ministry. That's going to be in Charleston, South Carolina, the August the twenty fourth through the twenty fifth. It's going to be powerful, amen. So I'm excited. So I I, I realize a lot of people are not on one. Uh, maybe the title, maybe you're scared. Uh, uh, to, to touch this amen a lot of uh, ministers probably won't touch this topic but it's needed so I, I, I titled this topic where is the integrity in the church where's the integrity in the church all right so uh, I'm talking out of my book this is my new book written 16 books uh, enhancing the prophetic in you and you know I'm so passionate about characteristics you know christ-like characteristics amen so this is for everyone yes i teach about the prophets and about certain characteristics but we have to have integrity we have to have integrity all right so if you have this book please go get it amazon.com barnes and nobles amen you can definitely get this book it's going to change your life but if you have this book you know uh chapter 45 at the back of the book you see how thick this is amen nope this is not a robe this is a cardigan this is a cardigan I, I i like wearing sweaters i'm very cold natured you know yeah my hands are like ice right now yeah so this is this is what i do i like sweaters i like cardigans you know i like long sleeves i will wear long sleeves in the summertime you hear me all right so where's the integrity in the church many of you guys know you, you know there's so much foolishness going on people lying people stealing people uh gossiping and i have to repent you know people just doing all kind of crazy stuff they're twisting the scriptures uh you know where's the integrity 
And I'm talking about people with titles. I'm talking about leaders. You know, I, I, I'm talking about people on like uh, members from all walks. Where is the integrity? Amen. Like people want to do what they want to do. People teaching all kind of erroneous teachings and all kind of foolishness. Where is the integrity? You know, pastors, certain pastors telling uh, their members it's okay to have premarital sex. You know, where's the integrity? Uh, just, uh, just, it just, it's just crazy. So today we're going to talk about this, and then we're going to. I'm going to also give you. I think I wrote down five five benefits of having integrity and i pray that this teaching will shift your mindset and just return your heart back unto god and just make you want to live uprightly make you want to seek god with everything within you amen see a lot of you guys you're called you got an, you got a calling on your life you have work that god is placing on your life to do but then guess what you know, you're, you're around bad company. And the word of God says bad company corrupts, you know, good character, good morale. Amen. So integrity, what does that mean? The word integrity is a quality of being honest. How many lying people out here, lying pastors that you know? You know, I, I, I never call nobody's name or nothing like that. But, but people be lying, you know. So having integrity is being honest. You know, have you ever been around a compulsive liar? They, they just lie, 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 lie about everything. You know, asking their age, lying. You know, asking where they live, they just lying. Come on now. Where's the integrity? You know, have, having integrity is, you know, having strong moral principles, which is according to the word of God, right? According to God's word. You know, like, for example, uh, you know, not fornicating. You know, not uh, doing things that grieves the Spirit of God inside of you. You know, the Holy Spirit is vexed. He's, he's grieved by people out here pretending to be something they're not. You know, preaching something that they're not living. You know, I can go on and on and on. People changing wives like they change shoes. And people just slandering people. People trying to tear somebody else down and... Uh, because they think it's going to make them look better. All kind of crazy stuff. Come on, where's the integrity in that? You're going to use your social media platform to tear somebody else's down. You know, this, this is foolish. How's that, how does that encourage somebody? I mean, is, is that what souls for, for God's kingdom? Is God getting the glory up out of that? If you tear your brother and sister in Christ down? Is God getting the glory out of that? Because you think you, uh, you know, making yourself look better by tearing somebody else down? A kingdom divided against itself can't stand. You know, we do a good job. And I know this word ain't popular. Amen. We do a good job in the body of Christ tearing each other down. Competing against one another. You know, bashing, throwing stones and all kind of crazy stuff. Where's the integrity in that? Having integrity is having moral uprightness. It has a heart that says, oh, God, okay, God, I, I want to please you. I want to please you. I'm not worried about fitting in with the crowd. You know, I'm not worried about trying to be famous, trying to be rich. No, God, I want to please you. I, I want to walk in integrity. I want to walk uprightly. Where's the integrity, saints? Just because everybody else is doing it doesn't mean that it's right just because everybody else is doing it doesn't mean that God is pleased with it just because everybody else is doing it doesn't mean that you have to do it amen where's the integrity amen what about for example what about that you know that you know that somebody uh, is preaching something that is not lining up with scriptures you up here talking about some amen no no it's, it's no amen Amen. Pray for that leader. That's right. Stand up for righteousness. Where is the integrity? Amen. It, it, it seems like there's a lack of integrity. People just doing the right thing. And this is part of character because character is what you do when nobody else is looking. See, people think that God, you know, 
he don't see or they're trying to hide and do something in the closet or do something in, in secret. But God sees everything. Where's their integrity? Right? I mean, come on now. This is this is what you do when nobody's looking. You know, it, it seems like, and I, I'm going to go here. It seems like people uh, feel like they're above the law. Certain things don't apply to them. And it, it's, it's, it's very vexing. It's very grieving, grievous. Amen. That the Holy Spirit inside of you, who's supposed to be your teacher, number one, um, you know, your comforter, your helper to enable you to do supernatural stuff. He's grieved. He's vexed. Where's the integrity? People trying to do everything they can do just to get ahead. You know, it's crazy. You know, see people in the world, I'm going to say this, people in the world, you know, they might sleep their way to the top, but we don't do that in the kingdom. Amen? We don't do that in the kingdom. People in the world will cheat their way to the top, but we don't do that in the kingdom. Amen? Well, we're supposed to be different. There has to be a standard. Amen? Where's the integrity? You know, so uh, just preachers are fornicating, lying wonders, lying signs. You know, I, I can go on and on and on. You know, uh, they're trying to justify certain things with, with the scriptures and taking it all out of context. You know, so it, it's, it's, it's an abomination, you know, in the sight of God. So, you know, I, I want to give you guys, and this is not going to be uh, a, a long broadcast, but I want to give you a few things amen we're going to talk about some benefits right we're going to talk about some benefits really really quickly and let me just pull up my notes really really quickly yes I, i've written down like five benefits there we go five benefits saints and i got like it's open on my laptop lord jesus all right so all right so, what does the Word of God say about integrity? The Word of God tells us it's better for a poor person to walk in integrity than one who is crooked in speech and is a fool. Amen. God cares about integrity. Amen. God cares if you're going to do the right thing when nobody's looking. You know, the, the Word of God says it's better for a poor person. You know, who walks in integrity to somebody that has some money and, and that's this is a liar, that's a fool. You know, it's better. That's how much God values integrity. Amen. It, the word of God also tells us, you know, he that walks uprightly, walks surely. They have a level of confidence. Amen. That, you know, that every, and, and, and also the scripture says in Proverbs 10, 9, uh, it says, but the perverted one, the one that perverts his ways shall be known that there's going to be a, an exposure coming. It's going to be uh, an exposure coming to people that, uh, you know, they're not, uh, they don't have integrity. They're playing games with God. They're leading people astray. Amen. So when you walk up rightly, it's a level of confidence that you have. A level, a level of surety. Amen. That, you, that God will provide to you. So number one, the first benefit I'm going to give you guys. I got four to give you. You know, integrity is going to guide you. Somebody put that up there. Number one, integrity is going to guide you. It's going to guide you. What does that mean? It's going to keep you on the right track. It's going to help you make better decisions. Integrity will guide you. You know, uh, so many people, um, they, for example, they, they want God to open up doors and do certain things. And they start off pure. They start off right in the beginning. But then somehow down the line, they fall off. They let greed come in. They let perversion come in. They they do all kind of crazy stuff, you know, because they lacked integrity from the beginning. That's why I encourage people, you know, I encourage people to don't don't uh, rush the process. Amen. Don't rush the process of what God is doing in your life. Amen. I thank God for my wilderness season. Amen, because God got a bunch of stuff out of me when I was in Colorado for three years. I thank God for taking me through the process. Amen, so number one, integrity will guide you. You know, certain things God don't have to speak to you about because you know what's wrong. You know, because you walk 
in a level of integrity. Like, nope, I'm not going to breathe the Holy Spirit. Nope, uh-uh. Because, -uh. you know, I, I look at Jesus, I look at the Holy Spirit as a friend. And when you start looking at Jesus like that, the Holy Spirit, you, you don't want to grieve him. Amen. You know what's right from wrong. Amen. You know, you know, it's either black or white. It's no gray. It's in the middle, you know, like right and wrong, you know, it's no compromising. So integrity is going to guide you that you're going to say, okay, I'm not going to be having phone sex. I'm not going to be uh, sexting on my phone. I'm just putting it out there because somebody on here doing that. I'm not going to be drinking, sipping wine and taking it to the head to cope with my pain. I'm, I'm not going to, you know, be uh, being a gossiper and tearing up friendships and uh, t tearing somebody down with my words. I, I don't have time for that because I'm going somewhere in God. You know, I'm not going to allow my name to be attached to foolishness. So integrity will guide you. All right. Uh, pro write this down. Proverbs 11 and 3. Proverbs 11 and 3 says the integrity of the upright should guide them. It should guide them. Amen. But the perverseness, the junk, the foolishness, you know, the dishonesty, the lack of integrity of the transgressors will destroy them. Don't you know sin kills? Sin kills. See, this is what the enemy does. He comes and he makes you feel like, oh, if you do that. You know, go ahead and take that shortcut. Do that. He doesn't He doesn't show you the consequences. He doesn't show you um, the things that will happen if you go ahead and sin. Go ahead and do that. You know, have integrity. Singles on here. You know, it's okay to say no. Don't allow, don't, don't allow nobody to pressure you to sin against God. Say no. Amen. Uh, I heard a teaching. Uh, somebody said, what should you tell somebody? Um, that you, uh, when you're dating, when should you tell somebody that you, you, you're going to wait to have sex, uh, in marriage? I think immediately, I think immediately, amen. Why waste time? That's my, that's my thing. Why waste time? Uh, yeah. Which time to catch feelings is going to be harder. Tell that person immediately. Like, no, I, you know, I, I'm a woman of God. I'm a man of God. And I'm practicing abstinence until I get married, you know, everything up front. Why waste time in like, oh my God, I'm starting to like him or her. No, we don't have time for that. You know, that's integrity. That's having integrity. That's, that's, that's having character. Amen. That you're not going to play with somebody's heart. That you're not going to open up doors. Amen. Or you're not going to cross boundaries. You got to have, I don't know why I'm going here. You got to have boundaries. Boundaries. Amen. This is what integrity is going to keep you and help you make better decisions. Aren't you tired of messing up? Aren't you tired of doing the same thing, going around the mountain uh, more than one time? When I was in Colorado, when I was in the wilderness, I, I said, God, I'm not staying in this wilderness for long. Amen. I got up out of there. Amen. Some people's wilderness seasons like 20 years, 14 years. Mine was three. I said, uh-uh, God, I'm going to yield. I'm going to do everything right. I'm getting about a year. Amen. You know, so integrity, you, you have better decisions. Like, no, nah, I'm not going to grieve God. Nope. I'm not going to even have certain conversations. I'm not going to entertain certain conversations. You know, I'm going to be short. I'm going to cut it, shut it down. This is about having integrity. Amen. Integrity. So, like I said before, it's, it's about being honest. Amen. It's about having moral principles. And those principles are according to the word of God. Amen. Because without it, it's going to destroy you. Because, for example, uh, um, you, you can, and it's better right now. Some of you guys are in a waiting season. You're in a season where it seems like you're being overlooked. Maybe nobody's calling you uh, to, to preach or X, Y, Z, or maybe doors are not opening for you that God wants to open. Let God deal with this issue now before you go out there, before you go out to the world. Amen. Till you go out there uh, and, and you know, you know what I'm trying to say? Let God deal with this issue right now. That way you can have longevity. Amen. Who wants longevity? Who wants to be around, you know, 25 years, 30 years from now, being faithful to what you're called to do? Lack of integrity is going to destroy your witness. You think I want to listen to somebody that's cheating on their wife? You know, you think I want to listen to the gospel from somebody that's smoking weed, getting high? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. 
I want to listen to somebody that's living, amen, uh, what they uh, uh, preach, that's really uh, living holy. This is the people I want to listen to, people with integrity. All right, number two, integrity will protect you. Somebody put that up here. Integrity will protect you. What do you mean? It's going to keep you in the will of God. The will of God is the safest place to be. That is so true. I'm going to say it again. Integrity will protect you. How? Because it keeps you in God's will because that's the safest place to be. It's the safest place to be. For example, when God first showed me a vision, one of the first visions he showed me was flaming arrows. I was just worshiping the Lord. And then the glory came, and he pinned me down to the floor. I could only move my head a little bit to the right and to the left. And then he opened up my eyes, and he began to show me flaming arrows. And these arrows were golden color. And you know how you shoot a bow and arrow? And many of you guys heard me say this before. You know, they sh the, the bow and arrow is um, a vertical, like up and down. But this one was horizontal, and it was shooting like an orange. I've never seen this color before. I thought it was orange. But it was fire. And the Lord began to show me flaming arrows in Psalms chapter 7. I think it's verse 13. Psalm 7 verse 13. He says, daughter, as long as you stay in my spirit, then I will loose my flaming arrows at your enemies. He says, as long as you stay in the spirit, I will loose my flaming arrows at your enemies. So what was God saying to me? He was saying, daughter, as long as you stay in my will for your life, as long as you stay connected to my spirit, as long as you walk uprightly before me, then I'm going to protect you. Why was God issuing me a level of protection? Because I was staying in his will. Amen. So integrity will protect you. I cannot have integrity if I'm going to do what I want to do. If I want to do things contrary to the word of God, that's not having integrity. But if I'm walking all rightly, if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm obeying God's commandments, then I have, you know, integrity, you know, and God's going to protect me because I'm in his will. Amen. I'm literally what the scripture says in Psalms 91. I'm in the, 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 the secret place. I'm in his shadow, the shadow of the almighty. How can I be in God's shadow? Because I'm following him. I'm following his, uh, his, his ways. Wherever he goes, I'm going to follow. That's having integrity. Amen. So it's going to keep you. So, for example, how do people get outside of the will of God? Because they disobey him. They disobey his commandments. You know, God said, don't marry that knucklehead. You, you married him or her. Amen. God said, don't go out to the clubs. Don't do drugs. But that's what you decide to do. You got outside of his will. You end up getting pregnant. You end up getting some STD. Amen. You, you, you Listen, sin kills. Amen. Sin equals death. That's what the scripture says. Sin equals death. How can God protect you if you're out of his will? Come on now. You know, I thank God for his grace and mercy. You know, and even in, uh, some of y'all can testify, even in our ignorance and our foolishness, you know, the hand of the Lord was with us, protecting us. Amen. When we was out in sin and out in the world. But once you know God and once you know this word and these principles, if you get outside of his will... Uh, he, you know, he's not obligated to protect you. Some of you right now, you're playing with fire. You're playing with fire. You're compromising. If you go out there today and sin, you know, it's, it's the enemy will kill you. Amen? The higher you go up in glory, the higher you go up in God, amen, the harder you're going to fall. Why won't you allow God, and this is for somebody, why won't you allow God to deal with this issue? Why are you down here before you go up here? Because once you go up here on certain platforms that you believe in God to open for you, or in the worldwide, or nations, or whatever, if you don't have integrity, the harder you're going to fall. And sometimes it will cost you your life. It will cost you everything. It will cost you your life. You know, you go out here and sin today lives are affected by your choices amen you know what kept me living right now i told you guys this uh when i was single and now single for three years uh you know i had in the back of my mind it's not about you number one and then if i go out here and mess up guess what lies are depending on me lies are depending on me you know you go out here and mess up 
guess what? It's going to hurt a lot of people. You might have children. It's going to affect the children. You might have a ministry. It's going to destroy your ministry. You go out here today and make a bad choice. It's going to affect your business. It can affect your home. It, it can tear your family apart. Because you have a lack of integrity. Because, you know, you're selfish. You know, that's your disrepentance. and say, God, help me not to be selfish. God, God, do a work in me. You know, it's not about you. Lives are depending on you to make it. Lives are depending on you to be holy. Lives are dependent on you to stay in the will of God for your life. Psalms 25, verse 21, it says, Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, to keep me, for I wait on thee. We're we, we going to wait on God. Somebody decree this out. I'm going to wait on God. Because when I walk, when I have integrity and, and, and uprightness, it's going to preserve me. Because guess what? When temptation comes, when temptation comes, I will not stumble. Because guess what? I got a prayer life. Come on now. The word of God tells us to pray. You know, pray without ceasing. Pray so you don't be led into temptation. See, the enemy knows. He, he has certain familiar spirits watching you, studying you. He knows what you like. You know, he's always trying to tempt you, test you, try you, trying to get you to mess up. But if you have integrity, you're not going to even take the bait. See, when you have integrity, see, the enemy can't get you to sin, but he'll try you in some other way. Maybe he'll try to attack you mentally. Maybe he'll try to attack you physically. Maybe he'll try to attack you financially because he know if you have integrity, he can't get you to take the bait of temptation. So he'll start messing with your stuff. But that's only a season. And you know that, guess what? You got the victory. This is what is having integrity. That it's going to protect you. It's going to protect you. And, we're, we're, and, and it says, wait on God. Amen? Wait on God. Number three. Write this down. Number three. Integrity. Number three. It, it will defend you. It would defend you. Let me say it again. Integrity will defend you. Oh, that's been so silly. What does that mean? That means that God will vindicate you. How do you expect God to vindicate you, to go to bat for you, when you don't have integrity, when you're wrong? That's just like stealing a car and asking God to bless you. It don't work like that, boo. That's like stealing a car and asking God, God, bless me to buy some rims on a stolen car. That, that's not, no, that, that's not how it works. You know, when you have integrity, God is obligated to defend you. What does that mean? He's going to vindicate you. That means, guess what? You don't even have to fight the battle yourself. Have you ever, you know, for example, I, this happened to me so many times, I never even said nothing. You know, God raised up other people to defend me because I had integrity. They said, no, I, I know her. I know her character. Amen. You know, and you don't talk about my sister like that. You don't mess with my, my prophet is like that. X, Y, Z. It will defend you. I, I, I'm, I, I'm real talk. Amen. It will cause it, uh, it will cause other people to speak highly of you because they know your character. Amen. They know that you're a man or woman of God, a true man or woman of God. So they're going to, you know, go to bat for you. Amen. You know, for example, when I, when I first got called into this thing, uh, so-called friends, I thought they were my friends. Uh, you know, this one, one man, he turned on me. And he said, Kimberly, what's, what's wrong with this prayer line and XYZ? And he tried to blame me for the prayer line falling apart because I started prophesying. And he was scared of the prophetic. So my, my, you know, the, the people on the prayer line, they went to bat for me. They went hard for me. They defended me. And I didn't even have to say a word. Exodus 14, 14 says, be still and the Lord will fight for you. Be still. I didn't have to get in my, my flesh or felt like I had to de defend myself. No, because integrity, when you keep doing the right thing, when you have a heart that's right before God, amen, he will defend you. And he will even use people to do it. He will use people to do it. Amen. I know some of you guys have been slandered, backstabbed, talked about. Amen. But don't you ever, 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 ever get on that uh, that level where 
you get on their level amen if somebody's trying to talk bad about you talk all kind of crazy stuff don't you dare get on that level and and fight back the same way no boo you gotta fight this thing in the spirit amen you can't fight this battle in the flesh because the word of god says we wrestle not against flesh and blood amen I, I know the enemy will test you and try you. Trust me, when I, I, I had an anger issue, amen, I was on probation for two years because I had an anger issue and I destroyed a lot of property and I had to pay back a lot of money because of the property that I destroyed. So when God was trying to get that anger out of me, amen, and bring me to a place where I, I don't sweat the small stuff, to bring me to a place where I don't let a lot of people's comments, uh, you know, ridicules, mockery to, to get to me. Amen. So while I was going through the process of transition, uh, God allowed certain people, he used certain situations to get the anger out of me. You know, it seems like when God was delivering me from anger and I, I had the rudest patience. And I, I'm, I'm up here trying to live right and, you know, trying to walk in the right attitude. And then I have patience be evil to me and just want to curse me out. I'm like, oh, you know, or try to hit me. And this is when I worked in the hospital as a, a, a respiratory therapist. I would have the rudest doctors over me that night, just mean, and the rudest nurses I had to work with, just mean. And I was like, God, but you know what? I knew God was working on me, amen? And so I developed integrity. I developed integrity, and now I'm starting to get word of knowledge. Somebody on here, you have a right ear ache, and God wants to heal that right ear, amen? That's you, amen? I sit forth the fire of God on you, and just let me know if that's you, because God wants to heal you today, amen? So, and I feel it, I, I, I got to get you healed right now in jesus name i feel it in my right ear amen that's you just let me know amen so listen so it developed a level of integrity in me a level of integrity amen because i went through the process allow god to do a work in you and this is the crazy part amen so when uh when i got called into full-time ministry been in full-time ministry since 2016 um and what happened was, can, can I be transparent? Can I testify? This is going to bless you. This is really going to bless you. So what happened was, when you work in the hospital, you can't have stuff, you know, like over you, your, 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 your background and stuff like that. So my supervisor found out that I was, you know, on, I, had, I was on probation, so I had to get let go. But she was going to hire me back. She said, oh, she said, get rid of this probation. I, I, I'm going to hire you back because you're the sweetest person I have ever met. Everybody, they want you to work at their facility. They, they request you by name. Amen. So I went from being angry, bitter, scorned to a woman that had integrity where people talked highly of me. Usually when somebody find out something bad about somebody on their past, they, they want to kick them to the curb like, yeah, I knew something was wrong with her. That No, my supervisor wanted to hire me back. She said, wow, everybody speaks so highly of you. She's like, wow. You know, when I was in, I, worked, I lived in Colorado Springs, and many of you guys know it's like an hour from Denver. I, I, people in Denver was asking me about name, about my name. They said, oh, I like that girl Kimberly. She worked here last week. Send her back. So, trust me, I, I got a lot of good hours, amen. You know, people was um, um, buying me stuff. and just I had so much favor on that job. Why? Because the level of integrity, amen, the level of integrity. You know, so integrity will defend you. So, even though I, I was in trouble, I did, I, I did some bad things before I started living right and getting serious with God, amen, that didn't affect me because they wanted to hire me back. My supervisor even gave me a 1-800 number I can call to get it all taken care of. But then the Holy Spirit said, nope, I'm calling you off this job. So he shut the door to that. You know, I could have got my job back. I could have got it back. I could have got, got my job back. They want to hire me back. They didn't care about that. It's like, no, she, she's a woman of integrity. She's the sweetest person, the nicest person I have ever met. But God shut that door because God said, I got some work for you to do in this way, in this direction. All right, so that's number four. Number four, integrity. Put this down, leaves a positive legacy. Integrity leaves a positive legacy. Somebody put that up here. 
it leaves a positive legacy. Many people, they don't think about their actions and how it can affect generations, generations, and generations. I always tell my students, and I've been teaching this for a long time, about a year and a half, I tell them, you know, don't get caught up in the giftings. I'd rather have character than some gift. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? People are not going to remember you for being anointed. They're going to remember you for that scandal you did. Think about it. Bill Cosby, and I'm bringing this up, he did a lot of great things in the community. He donated millions of dollars to certain charities. And guess what? When he checks up out of here, they're not going to remember the good things he did. They're going to remember he was a pedophile. They're going to remember him as being someone that had a sex addiction. They're going to remember him as an, as an adulterer. You know, uh, Bishop Eddie Long. They're not gonna, they, they don't remember him for uh, donating uh, to the church members when they couldn't pay their light bill and feeding the homeless and all the great work he did in the community. No, they remember him as sleeping with little boys. Come on now. Integrity will leave a positive legacy. You got to think about, you know, when you when you check up out of here, because one day we all will. What will people say about you? What will people say about you? Would they say, oh man, there, there was a, a homosexual. Oh man, there was a compulsive liar. Oh man, there was a thief. There was a murderer. Or would they say something great about you? Like, oh man, there was a blessing, a true man of God, true woman of God. They touched many lives. And integrity is going to leave a, a, a positive taste in people's mouth about you. Think about it. I was telling you guys, I said this before, that it's not about you. It's not about you. Keep that in the back of your mind from now on. Proverbs 20, verse 7. Proverbs 20, verse 7. It said, the just man, the just man, the righteous man, the upright man walks in integrity. And his children, peep this out, his children are blessed after him. See, some of your grandchildren, and you're, you were somebody's grandchildren, child, amen? You're being blessed. And they're being blessed because of how your grandfather, grandmother walked. Amen. And if you walk correctly, your grandchildren, your, your grand, great grandchildren will be blessed. It leaves a positive legacy. It, 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 it's, it's all about character. Many people feel like, oh, I'm anointed, but you don't got no character. You know, oh, I'm anointed, but you're a liar. Oh, I'm, a, I'm anointed, but you're a gossiper. Oh, I'm anointed, but you're a fornicator. Come on now. Integrity. Where, where's the integrity at in the church? Come on now. God is raising up people with integrity. God is raising up people with character that they went through the process. Maybe, maybe you're coming out of a wilderness season. Maybe you are in a wilderness season right now, a dry place. A place where it seems like you're not prospering, nothing's happening, maybe getting frustrated, but that frustration is causing you to seek the face of God. That frustration has you in a place where God is the, the, the potter and you are the clay and God is doing the work. God is purging you. God is purifying you. God is getting the lust out, the pride out, the perversion out. I thank God for my wilderness season. I thank God that I'm no longer that woman full of lust. I'm no longer that fornicating woman. I'm no longer that adulterous woman. I'm no longer that bitter, scorned, angry woman. But I have a level of integrity. Trust me. Amen. Let God take you through the process. And deal with this, your heart, before certain doors open up for you. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? This is this is vital. This is not a game. You go out there to you go out there and sin today. Guess what? God might not cover up that sin. But you might be exposed. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? This is not a game. People want to do what they want to do. You know, people making the church look bad. You know, homosexuals marrying each other, men and men, women and women. You know, people filling on the children, fondling kids. Where's the integrity at?
the uprightness. People lying on their taxes, people getting grant money, spending it on buying Lexuses and Mercedes Benz and on, on, you know, Gucci and all kind of crazy stuff. Where's the integrity? Come on now. I encourage you to go back to your first love. This is not a game. This is not a game I'm going to review. Amen. Number one, when you have integrity. Somebody put the, put the recaps up here for me. It will guide you. Come on now. Number two, integrity will protect you. Number three, integrity will defend you. And number four, integrity will leave a positive legacy. It will leave a positive legacy. Amen. I just want to pray. And I still feel that right ear. I don't know who you were on here with that right ear. But God wants to heal you. Amen. Lord, we just come before you today, God, and we just pray, Lord, that you take us through the necessary process. Take us, Lord God, and do a work in us. Somebody decree out right now, God, do a work in my life. God, I'm tired of playing games. Lord, I want to always walk in integrity. God, help me make better decisions. God, bless me and give me the strength to close the door to sin in my life. Bless me, God, to say no, Lord. Uh, God, bless me to crucify this sinful flesh, this wicked flesh. Lord, do a work in me. God, do a work in my life. God, I want to play no more. I want to be the real deal. I want to walk the way you want me to walk and live the way you destined me to live, God. Lord, I pray holiness and peace and purity on our lives. I pray for favor. And Lord, let us be people that's going to be a good representation, a good ambassador of Jesus Christ in this earth. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So I see on Facebook Live, me, me, more. Was that your right ear? Was your right ear hurting? Let me know. You said your right ear is burning. Let me know. Let me know. And I'm going to take a few prayer, prayer requests. Amen. Before I get off, I always want to have an opportunity to serve you. Amen. And, and my job today was to make you think. And I pray you go back and watch the replay. Uh, and push you closer to seeking the heart of God. And I uh, read a little bit out of my book today, Enhancing the Prophetic in You. Amen. Many people think prophets ought to do is prophesy, prophesy. But a true prophet of God, you know, they're going to turn their hearts back unto God and never themselves. Amen. Receive that word. Amen. You know, uh, so this book is about character. If you like the teaching today, I encourage you to get the book. I talk about a lot about characteristics. You know, how we got to have be long-suffering, have some patience and gentleness and, you know, faithfulness and meekness and humility and uh, a level of servitude, being spirit-led. You know, I talk about all that, you know, uh, so that was you, Mimi Moore, amen. So did, did your right ear get healed, amen? I just want you to confirm it, amen. Did your right ear get healed? You said you felt the fire in it, let me know, because sometimes you call out stuff and people kind of scared to say, that's me, amen. But um, just let me know, did you just get healed? Mimi Moore, I'm talking to her, she is on my Facebook page, amen. So I, I just want to take a prayer request, and um, I feel somebody you have a left back pain. It's on the left lower back. Amen. God wants to heal you of that today. Amen. Uh, and I pray for um, Moki Akia. That, that's you, L Latrice. Suddenly rise. You got the low low back pain. If that's you, please get up and move. Amen. Please get up and move. God wants to heal you right now. Lord, I just thank you, Father God, for um, who was I praying for? Lord, I forgot. That's, that's nerve damage. Please move. Okay, Mimi, Mimi Moore said her ear still burns. Amen. Just receive a healing. Amen. It's going to burn for a few days. Amen. All right. Get up, Latrice. Get up. Get up and move. Amen. Lord, I, I, I pray that you reverse that nerve damage. I command it to be reversed in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I thank you, Father God. Lord, for healing in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I feel I feel fire in that your left lower back. What do you feel? What do you feel? Amen. What do you feel? Let me know. 
I mean, I, I want to encourage you guys, if you have not already, go register for the conference. October the 20th, Florence, South Carolina. I believe in God for miracles. Amen. I believe in God for miracles. Um, you feel some sensation. Amen. Get up, move. I prophesy over you. The more you move, God's going to heal you. Amen. And I'm, I'm also going to, um, you're moving. T tell me what you feel. I feel fire. Just in that air. I feel like warmth coming up upon you right now. I, I feel God in spirit. How many, how many guys feel the anointing? I feel it. I'm believing God for uh, the people in walkers and wheelchairs to, to, to be healed. Amen. And I, I thank God. I, I feel fire. I feel a, uh, His glory being released. And I feel God staring up, staring up uh, gifts on here. Amen. I pray for people that's been stagnant. Amen. So I pray refreshing upon you. Amen. That the gifts inside of you will become stared up. That you begin to prophesy. Amen. With accuracy. You begin to prophesy with boldness and clarity. Amen. I curse the heart palpitations off of you. I think, I think your name was Kitty. Uh, receive that anointing. Amen. Look at Latrice M. Suddenly right. She said the pain is lifting. Amen. You feel coolness. A lot of people's stomach burns. I want to get off of here, but I feel led just to keep praying for you. Amen. So just lift hands. If you, I'm telling you, if you feel dry, if you feel stuck, if you feel stagnant, if you need a touch from heaven today, lift hands. Let me pray refreshing over you. I pray refreshing over you right now. I pray fresh oil will be released on you. I pray for peace. Right now, in Jesus' name, peace. And if you're sick on here, oh Jesus, get up and move. Just get up and move. Amen. Amen. Get up and move and do something you couldn't do before. I bind up the strong man of infirmity. It has to come up and out of God's people in Jesus' name. I, I can't even do nothing. I, I want to try to prophesy, but this is what I want to do. But that's not what God wants me to do right now. Amen. So I got to. He's in charge. Amen. Just receive it. I feel people that's got their hands lifted. You're going to feel warmth on your hands. Amen. Just receive that anointing. Receive it. Receive it. Now I command a breakthrough in your finances. I command a breakthrough in your relationships. I command a breakthrough in your spiritual walk. In Jesus' name. Your hands on receive it. I come to decree in the clear. Come on, somebody. That scandals will never be attached to our names. That foolishness will not be even associated with us. Come on now. You're going somewhere. You're going somewhere in God. Who's going somewhere in God? Come on now. God's going to use you in the marketplace. Oh, Jesus. God's going to use you. Come on, somebody. Right where you are in your community. You don't have to be uh, behind no pulpit for God to use you. Nope. God can use you in a restaurant. Come on now. You know how many times I went to the restaurant and then I had to speak over somebody in there? God's going to use you when you go to the post office. Come on now. Went to a post office just the like last week, and guess what? Come on out. And and somebody was in there, and they was about to pass out, and I had an opportunity to lay hands on them. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Receive that anointing. All right, you guys, I'm I'm gonna go. I gotta get some work done. Amen. I'm gonna come back tomorrow. If you're new, follow me. You know, share the broadcast, be a blessing. I'm going to teach about, I'm going to try to come up tomorrow and teach about the prophetic. I'm going to finish up the making of the prophet a series. Amen. So much to talk about. Amen. So I'll probably do that tomorrow. All right. I'll see y'all later. God bless.